Hello, this is Sherry. Hi, Randy. Hi, Sherry. We're both here. <laughs> yes. I'm trying. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? I have to switch to my iPhone because everything's down in my area. Yes, I can hear you. Great. Um, I'm just going to try to find our, um, get our PowerPoint ready. So when it's our time, to, I can just share my screen. Okay. Uh, man, this did not come at a good time for my internet to be going down. Yeah. Spectrum is oh. down for like half the day, they say. Oh, really? Mm hmm. So I'm sure it's down at the lighthouse as well. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Good morning, everyone. Nice hey, to see how's you it going? <laughs> Hi. Randy, I did get your email. I'm, I'm very sympathetic to the internet issues. I live out in rural Carleton. And we, most days are pretty good, but it seems like when it, with technology issues for us, when it rains, it pours. And if it's yeah, not well, happening, nothing with like, our, nothing, nothing like flying by the seat of your pants. I'm glad you got my, my partial bio. Okay. I thought, oh my God, I haven't even saw your email until just that moment. <laughs> no worries. No worries. We've, we have, we've had issues in our office with, um, you know, we do a number of presentations for different different events and we had one of our uh, Marjorie uh, Botala who's our contact center supervisor for senior linkage line she was doing a presentation for the St. Louis County Health and Human Services Conference and completely lost everything she ended up calling in and she did her entire presentation with someone else moving her slides from there without having you know completely disconnected and did just awesome <laughs> so we're, I think we're all, we've all adjusted to trying to have a backup plan and then a, a backup to the backup plan, unfortunately. Yeah, I know how it goes. I, I talk a lot to other countries and I have a podcast called Accessibility Moving Forward. And so sometimes that all crashes and uh, it's just a mess sometimes. So thanks for understanding. <laughs> oh, no worries, no worries. Well, we'll um, we've got, we're scheduled for 11 o'clock. So we'll just um, hang out for a while. Um, you know, you can feel free to chat, but um, otherwise, um, I'll, as, as we start getting some folks showing up, um, I will kind of do a, a couple of notes and, and, and welcomes, and then um, we'll usually start about a couple minutes after the hour. So, okay, awesome. So Randy, then this is Sherry. Um, are you you're not able then to access or or kind of read along with me with the PowerPoint? Then are you? Sorry, you know I'm completely. Well, I'm not dead, but my internet connection is. <laughs> so I will just when we get to you know like when we get to our the slide nine that we're going to have you go over or, or just whenever I'll just um I'll I'll like just briefly read over what it says and then you can kind of take it from there if that's okay. what a team what a team all right we'll do it yes. okay and what i'll do um sherry and randy is i'm just going to move you guys up just have you guys up front so that um we don't we don't uh if you we do run into any issues or anything like that we'll get you guys kind of through through things quicker and and um just in case we run into any problems on Randy's end, so. Okay. Okay. Are we the only ones presenting today or is there someone else too you said? Uh, uh, Chloe Trolley with um, okay. Access North. Okay. This is pretty awful, Sherry, because you know I have to actually physically go into work and no internet. So we are gonna have to work uh, on basics with our student. So that's okay though. Yeah. You know what though, um, Randy, I'm thinking about it. They they had internet at the office because I the, the Zoom meeting did go on. Oh yeah. Okay. Well then yeah. that means I have to work harder. Dog on it. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um not to say that they'll still have it when what do you go? Noon? Yeah. 
something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, noon. I leave. I leave here by noon. Okay. Well, if I go into the office to pick up devices, I'll probably see you. I hope to. Yeah. Take this minute to just mention to you that I'm with Angels and McGregor. My name is Catherine Beatty. And our Live Well at Yes, Sherry, I just talked to you recently. Yeah. <laughs> our entire Live Well at Home grant application this year is dedicated to seniors with disabilities. So this timing is perfect for me. Great. Just all types of activities that we can involve seniors who have various disabilities. So it's kind of exciting that one. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, well, and, we're getting, and tomorrow is, um, I don't know if you guys saw the governor's proclamation is tomorrow is assistive technology day. Um, and so, um, yeah, so that's, you know, if this was tomorrow, then it would really be like, well, what a, you know, because who would have <laughs> known when this was put together that it would have been that. But yeah, um, yeah so that's exciting. Uh, assistive technology is really getting, getting, you know, there's more awareness out there um, uh, and there's there's more support too for, for people that are the funders of the technology to um, say, okay, yes, you, this fits and we should get this for you because you're just gonna increase your safety and independence. And so it's a really exciting time as an ATP to be able to see, um, you know, like 10 years ago, how much we struggled with certain things um, or everything seemed to be so much of a, a fight, like to get a device for someone or to mm -hmm. have something pushed through. And now mm, there's still, there's still times like recreation and leisure, um, waivers don't want to pay for, which is, is really frustrating to me because it's like, you know, it doesn't make sense, but, um, but other things seem to be going through very well. And it's all because of, um, you know, just ex education and exposure to, to what the devices can do and how how much uh, it, it can increase someone's well-being and safety. Especially yeah, it makes me glad I came out of retirement. Yeah, <laughs> we pulled Randy out of retirement. I don't know how, how many years ago, Randy. Um, well, let's see, I was in retirement for five years. Yeah. Well, while we would never have wanted a pandemic, it sure has highlighted both the social isolation issue and also what a gift technology can be, especially for those who are homebound or who are in rural areas where they might not be able to access those resources otherwise. And so it's, I think, like you said, it's exciting to see what comes out of this and, and um, what kind of new support for those initiatives comes out of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've seen, um, we've had a big push through our COVID um, uh, funding that we have, our CCC funding that we have at this time, mm -hmm. we've seen and we've done a big push to get um, tablets and, and um, hotspots out to people so they can, you know, do their telehealth appointments or connect with family, um, friends, and um, oh boy, it, our heads were, were literally spinning with, with staff. We hired new staff on board just to keep up with devices that were going out and being pushed out, especially over the winter months. Um, things have seen, now that I think that some um, people are able to be vaccinated and such, and then maybe the spring weather, although today doesn't look like spring, but um, <laughs> spring weather, it, it, I think it's slowed down a little bit for mm -hmm. device um, requests, but maybe people are able to um, get out and do more um, mm -hmm. and, and everything. I just really quickly, I gotta tell you, I, I met with um, a, a mother and a daughter and they speak Farsi and um, the son had bought the mom an iPhone years ago and she never could figure out how to use it. And I've been working with them. Well, we went, we, we did Instagram um, the other day with her family back in Iraq and there was just tears flowing down her face because she saw like mm -hmm. family members' faces and she um, was able to say, you know, like jokes and send pictures and do the different things. And it was wow. just so exciting to be there and to see that. And she was just grabbing my arm and, you know, like she was just so thankful and excited that she could see her cousin and I don't know, a couple of nephews. And yeah, it was really exciting. What and Did you use Google Translate or how did you communicate? No, her daughter speaks some English. So really the daughter and I get okay together. Cool. Yeah. That's really neat. 
Mm -hmm. Well, you're saying it's, you were mentioning the kind of a little bit of a downtick with the weather improving and folks getting vaccinated, but it just seems such a natural fit for our area technology as a resource because of the fact that, you know, we can be shut down for days due to weather, or you just may have folks who are really not comfortable with venturing out in that, whether it's a severe storm or whether it's just that you don't wanna drive on the winter roads and things like that. And so to be able to provide those options to folks is really a, a blessing. Mm -hmm. Hi, Chloe and Amanda. Hi. Hello. Welcome guys. Thank you. We've got, uh, uh, Randy's got uh, issues with no internet. So um, he is joining us uh, via phone right now. And so um, Chloe, if it's okay with you, I'll, we'll um, tee up uh, Sherry and Randy to go first and then um, take you after that. And that way we can, if we, I don't wanna, um, I don't want to be too confident about how, how well our technology is going to go on Randy's end. So we can get those guys taken care of. And then if it, if, if, if everything holds tight, great. And if not, at least we've, we've gotten through that part of it. Okay. Well, when it comes down to it, I just want to be first. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks the truth. <laughs> Well, and as folks are showing up, um, it's 1057, um, you know, we'll shoot to start probably about two minutes after. Um, just a couple of things. Um, we'll do some housekeeping before we get started, but just to let everyone know um, that our, our webinar sessions are recorded. Um, and that is for, for us to be able to provide um, this as a resource to folks who are not able to make sessions or who hear about it after the fact or, you know, get have an interest in a particular area that we're able to share those, um, those presentations with mm. us. It's 11 a.m. As folks are joining us, um, we'll be um, starting in just a couple of minutes. It's 11 a.m. Hi, Brenda. Just wanted to say hi. <laughs> Good morning, Kirsten. Hi, everybody. Kirsten is one of my colleagues uh, with Elder Care Development Partnership uh, staff with the Arrowhead Area Agency and Aging.
Kirsten, I woke up this morning and I walked past my window and there was snow and I, I didn't know I, it wasn't, it was like I had walked into another place and it was not jiving with what I was expecting. So same here. It was not, it was, it's bright. So the light is nice, but the, yeah, the cold and snow is not fun. <laughs> I was surprised as well. No, yeah. <laughs> still there. It's still there in my yard. <laughs> uh, Henry said, it's, it's winter. It's winter. I'm like, no, no, it's spring. It's spring. There's just snow right now. All we have to have is a little bit of, a little bit of above freezing and it'll all melt again. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that we will get started. Um, good morning. My name is Brenda Schaefer Pellinen. I'm a planner with the Arrowhead Area Agency on Aging. I'd like to welcome you all and thank you for joining us for today's session on assistive technology. Uh, before we start, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, today's session will be recorded. I will send out a follow up email with a link to the presentations once it, they've been uploaded. We'll also receive a link to a quick survey where you can give us feedback on the session and let us know what other subject areas you'd like to learn more about. Um, just a reminder, please keep your microphone set to mute. Um, if you do experience any issues with uh, your, on your computer with your bandwidth, just a reminder that it may help, it does help sometimes to disable your camera. Um, if you feel comfortable, please feel free to enter your name in the chat box and your if affiliation, if any, if you're with a particular organization or entity. Um, and please, as we're going through presentations, please enter any questions that you might have during the session in the chat and we'll take time at the end of the session to address those. Um, a quick reminder, um, visit our Facebook page for more information about upcoming sessions, such as we have one on coming up on May 11th on home modifications and another one coming up on June 16th a uh, presentation from staff from the Arrowhead Area Agency on Aging, uh, looking at housing options for older adults, as well as um, financing options to help pay for some of those, those choices. Um, I'd like to welcome our speakers and thank them for joining us today. Uh, Sherry Cook is the Assistive Technology Program Director at the Lighthouse Center for Vital Living. She's been working with assistive technology for more than 20 years. Uh, joining her is Randy Rusnak, who is an adjunct uh, technology instructor, also with the Lighthouse Center for Vital Living. Randy teaches assistive technology. He also teaches emotional support, braille, cooking, and cleaning. And following Sherry and Randy, um, we'll have uh, Chloe Trolley, who is a independent living and assistive technology specialist at Access North in Duluth. She's worked in the human services field for about seven years now and has been at Access North for almost a year and a half. Chloe's career has been focused on helping others in many different capacities, including residential settings, employment services, and leadership development. In her role at Access North, she enjoys being able to provide individuals with the tools that they need to increase their independence and achieve their goals. Welcome to our presenters. Sherry, if you want to take over, that would be great. Okay. Um, we do have a PowerPoint, so I'm going to, if it's okay, share my screen. Okay, and um, Randy, um, can you guys see it? Yeah, okay. So um, Randy, uh, my coworker, is having some internet difficulties today. So he um, he's going to be here and um, I'll kind of guide him in on, on what we're doing. But um, so yeah, thank you everyone. Again, uh, I'm Sherry with the Lighthouse Center for Vital Living. And Randy, I don't know if you want to say anything about yourself at this time. Oh, must I? <laughs> okay, uh, this is Randy Rusnak speaking. Um, and um, the, my bio is correct. I've been working at the Lighthouse since 2004 and I've actually been teaching internet stuff uh, since around 1989. Okay. All right. So we have, um, I don't know if you can see on here, we have a new name. Um, it's been really exciting um, over at the Lighthouse. We've expanded our mission. Um, we have a new name, a new look. We got our new signs up on our building. 
Um, and um, we have been extremely busy. Um, our current services over at the Lighthouse are um, technology training services. We have hired um, uh, probably three or four new people in the last um, eight months to uh, help us with um, intake for new, um, new referrals coming in, um, technology. Uh, we have now um, three full-time um, and a couple part-time uh, technology staff um, just really to, to help with um, getting devices set up for, for me or the OTs when we need to go out into the field. Um, and then also doing the instruction on um, software systems and different specialty services. Um, we are really busy with our wavered services, um, going out and doing assistive technology assessments and training. Um, we are a Minnesota Star partner, um, and we have a, a really large um, uh, loan and demo library. Um, we are actually in the middle of remodeling our AT room and um, getting set up on our new website. We'll have the link for our lending library. Um, where people can go and check out devices right within that link and we can get them um, ready for them for pickup at our office, we can ship them out or drop them off. So, um, so that'll be nice and our new website does should be um, rolling out here very soon. We have occupational therapy, um, COVID-19 help, uh, different technology devices that we're getting out to people, information um, with where um, people can go for their vaccines and accessibility at those sites, um, adjustment to blindness training and uh, support groups, peer mentors, uh, the radio, we have an in-office um, store and um, so much more. Um, so our technology training services, we will go out and do um, assessments and um, actual recommendations, uh, device lending training, and then ongoing support. So if we bring out a device to somebody, um, first of all, we'll bring out a few of them, whether it's me or one of our occupational therapists, um, and we'll, we'll kind of go over what device is best suited for them. We'll use the set framework where, you know, is it the con what, what is the consumer need? Um, what's the environment it's gonna be used in? Um, what is the task? And what are, the, what are the tools? What tools should we look at doing this? And um, so we'll, we'll go out and we'll do that and we'll make sure that everything is working for, for that, that framework. Um, and then helping them with um, securing funding if that's an issue or they, they um, are not able to purchase the device on their own. We do have some funding options um, in different grants at the Lighthouse that we can assist with. Um, I can look at different funding sites throughout the state. Um, or help with writing grants for people. Um, and um, the waivers also can cover for people. Um, once we do, even say if that person does um, go through a successful trial of a device, um, they have it for about 30 days. And then, you know, a waiver medical insurance or, or grant can cover that device for that person. We will then offer ongoing um, training and support. So they're never just left, you know, they're never given an iPad and then um, not really sure how to use it or how to make it accessible. Um, you know, we've gotten calls, um, you know, I, I got this, this device for Christmas or a friend of mine gave this to me. Um, I've never turned it on. I don't know how to turn it on. I don't know how to use it. Um, and so we'll actually go out and do the training um, and we'll be there for them for continued support. Um, you know, I, I still go out and work with people that I saw, you know, um, almost two years ago, uh, if they have something that they, they need to go over or troubleshoot. We can sometimes do it over the, the computer, or over the phone too. We do have devices um, set up that we can access, uh, access some of the tablets and computers and laptops that we have out in the field. We can access from afar and um, assist people right there. Um, so we also have a nice, um, uh, option too. If somebody has their own iPad, well, um, but they're looking at a different application or a different app for that iPad or tablet, um, we can either um, bring out one of ours or we have a system where we can push that requested app onto their um, device. 
and um, let them borrow that for up to 30 days so they can see if it works or not for them um, before they go out and purchase it or the waiver purchases it or the school purchase it um, or voc rehab or so on and so forth. Um, so right now with our technology services, of course, um, during the COVID time, we have been extending some of our, our technology. Usually our technology will go up for about 30 days during COVID. Um, we, you know, if we've had um, environmental controls um, or smart home technology, like um, the Alexa shows or um, some Zigbee hubs for um, lighting, uh, those kind of things or tablets, um, people can keep them for, you know, an extended period of time, um, just so that we can make sure that they can access family and friends, um, you know, access healthcare and so on and so forth. Um, one thing about the devices that we are sending out at this time, especially during COVID, is we make sure that either they're um, LTE built in, which means um, the person does not necessarily have to have um, internet or Wi-Fi. Um, we are, our devices we shipped up that included um and so they don't need to worry about that then while um you know when they get the device from us it is ready to work um they do not you know if they do not have internet or access we either can send out one of our devices that does um through our provider or we can send out one of our hotspots through our provider for them to use um during the covid um, uh, duration um and if they're a, a client or consumer of ours um, anyone can access our AT um, lending library. Um, you know, again, it's if you want to try a device out or have someone come out and, and bring devices for trial, um, you can use it for up to 30 days to see if the device works for you. Um, and then again, you would still have supports after that because our, you know, myself, one of our OTs, occupational therapists, or one of our tech staff. Um, or other instructors would be able to continue with supports and training. Um, so we do a lot with uh, computers and tablets. Um, uh, right now, uh, we're doing a lot with telehealth. We're helping people get set up with telehealth um, doctor visits. We are doing a lot of smart home technology and environmental control setup. Um, we've been doing um, shades and power curtains, um, power door openers, um, We've been doing power um, kitchen sinks, um, you know, anything. And what I mean by that is um, through Alexa and your, um, the house can be controlled via the person's voice or communication device. Um, and, um, and that's all it's needed. It's really, really nice. Um, we have someone set up where it, it does, um, the whole entire house is voice activated right now. Um, and that is really nice. Um, we were we did have somebody um, where Meals on Meals was was trying to come and they were um, not leaving during the really cold months. They weren't leaving the meals. The person couldn't get to the door fast enough. Um, and so what we ended up doing is going in and um, installing and setting up a smart home lock and hub. And so the person can then activate that. Um, either through the app on her phone, um, uh, the Alexa, or um, her voice, depending on where in the house she is located at the time. And then that way the door, she can see who's out there, she can unlock and open the door, and then close the door and lock the door again when um, the person leaves. Um, so that's added independence and safety and security. Um, we do, um, we do have our um, AAC or communication um, applications that we can push out to our devices. Um, and then we also have some uh, lower tech to mid tech um, communication devices that we can set up and get out to people. Um, we do a lot with telephone training um, and that could be anything from smartphone training. Um, you know, we will go out, uh, a tech staff and I will be pre-COVID, would go out um, to, uh, like the the West Duluth Senior Center or up on in Silver Bay and uh, my coworker would take a table of Android users and I would take the iPhone users and we would just go over different things you know whether it's how to um, save your photos how to send a photo I mean just some basic things like that um, and then we can also go through some specialized equipment for monitoring or reminder systems um, 
my coworker and I are hooking up next week um, some uh, monitoring systems on doors and windows um, for extra safety for a young um, child that the, the parents are worried the child's going to get outside. So we're going to go and, and set up some more devices throughout the home. Um, and then coming home after crisis too, um, we work along with our occupational therapists um, and we're able to get some devices sent out uh, between either myself or them. Um, here are just a couple photos of different phones that we'll go out and assist with. We'll also refer to the TED program, the Telephone Equipment Distribution Program as needed. Um, that's a wonderful program. Um, these are just some pictures of devices um, for smart home devices or environmental controls that we typically will go out and install. Um, the one in the upper left corner is actually called an August lock. And that lock right there um, is a Wi-Fi lock and it's fairly easy to install. Um, it's not the best looking, but it's fairly easy to install. And that will, if you have a good connection with Wi-Fi within the house, um, that you can unlock and lock um, with your voice or the app on your phone or tablet. Um, I talked about a little bit about different reminders or alerts. Um, we do have these devices as well that people can um, borrow and see if they work for them before they buy them or if the waiver were to cover them. Um, Randy, I'm at slide nine that's talking about adjustment to blindness services. Um, um, I'm, I'll briefly um, go over a little bit of what the page says and then Randy's going to talk, um, this is his thing. Um, we're person-centered, um, um, specific training for low vision and blindness needs. Um, we're either center-based or in home. Um, we do technology training, we do orientation and mobility, um, daily living, braille and et cetera. We have a wonderful transition program, um, youth transition program and um, low vision occupational therapy. We have a low vision support group that meets every third Tuesday of every month at 1, 1 p.m. And what's really neat about that is the way we have our calling system set up is that the person can give us their information and then we can um, call them. All they have to do is answer their phone and press one to be connected. So they don't have to you know, find the number and we, we can call them and generate the call. So that's really neat. We have our peer-to-peer -peer mentor group, um, which works really nice. We've had some great success stories out of that. That's where we'll set up a peer to another peer with a similar, um, similar background. And um, they become just really great friends, someone to talk to and share your experiences with. We have our store, low vision store, and other adaptive devices. And then we do a mobility training to school age children in elementary through high school. Um, and then Randy, I don't you I don't know what else you would like to say about that. Oh my goodness, what a tough act to follow. Um, hi. Um, th there was a comment that was made that I might want to mute my mic. If I were to do that. Uh, you'd hear my screen reader and that would interrupt Sherry and have been a big mess. I use uh, voiceover technology on my iPhone. So every button that I press on my phone, every virtual button speaks. So that would have been a big interruption. I share office space with somebody uh, because of uh, a transitional period that uh, she's going through. Now my internet's down. So I did have to check it to see if, if she could work. So sorry about the uh, the talking in the back, background, but we just have to do the best we can here. Um, I have messages coming through, so you're going to hear them sometimes. I work entirely with voice, so uh, there's no visual aspect to my um, usage of technology because I'm totally blind myself. Um, well, let's see. Oh, there's so much to talk about. I, I'm going to try to shorten as much as I can, but uh, we, um, we have a youth transition program that we teach kids from uh, anywhere from 13 to uh, college age, which really has nothing to do with uh, uh, older folk. Um, but that's just some of the things that we do. Um, isolation is a big part of uh, what we strive for uh, in our program. We hook up uh, like echo shows and for people that uh, have um, low vision, uh, you can literally, take an object like a, a can of soup or a, a box of uh, something uh, with directions on it, hold it up in front of the Echo Show, uh, which by the way, um, the new versions actually turn when you, uh, when you wanna bring something in focus so you don't have that focus issue as much as you normally would. 
Um, and they, th that device can identify things for people. <sighs> Unfortunately, directions aren't really available for that stuff yet because um, this is just a, um, it's called Show Me. Uh, and it's uh, not developed to the point wait yet where it can give directions, but it's coming. Um, we uh, use FaceTime a lot with communications with uh, with seniors. Um, the the one of the big things uh, that seniors, um, you know, I really hate to use that word because ever since I was a teenager, they talked about senior living and stuff. Uh, and I was 18 and now I'm 68. <laughs> and so I'm, I fall into that category. Um, but the reason I mention this is because uh, I work with people that are, let's say from 13 to over 90. And um, last week I had uh, an individual who was actually talking about uh, learning how to read again because she has MAC, uh, macular degeneration. And I spoke with her and her son probably for two hours, convincing them that uh, the reading days were not over. Um, I told her about this uh, application called BARD, and B A R D, and she can read with her iPad uh, with a special state player as well to read books and newspapers and all kinds of things. And she started to cry when I um, told her all this information. She said, Thank God I got the right. Uh, person and the right uh, department uh, because she thought her reading days were all over with. Uh, to bring that kind of um, knowledge to people is just awe-inspiring, you know what I mean? So there's that. Um, oh my gosh, uh, there's so much to learn uh, and I, I have to keep up with this stuff every day to just to keep ahead of the technology game. Um, we teach uh, people how to use TVs again. Um, people think that they can't watch TV when they have lost their sight or if they are low vision. Um, so I recommend TVs that actually speak. Smart TVs like the Amazon Fire TV, I recommend. Uh, and that's just touching on the surface. We have voice description. Uh, voice uh, description on Netflix is just really something else to behold if you have never heard a described movie. Go into your device sometime and turn on audio description and see what kind of information you get. It's just awe-inspiring. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, you can um, either put up your hand or write them in the comments and somebody will read them. As I say, I'm a voiceover user, which is a built-in screen reader on your iPhone. I won't be able to hear them because my internet connection is down. So if anybody has any questions, just feel free to ask whenever the presentation is done. And uh, that's about it. I know it's kind of short, but there's much more stuff to talk about. Thank you, Randy. Um, does This is Sherry. Does anyone have any questions yet at this time? Okay. Um, so I'll just um, keep going on here. Um, these are just some photos of some lower tech um, devices that we have in our lending library that people can use, um, you know, if they're uh, have some vision loss, um, you know, there's the, the, um, the night, you know, nice with the guards on them. Um, there's <coughs> adaptive um, keyboards that, or I'm sorry, not keyboards, cutting boards that have, you know, pivoting knives or um, different things on them. So you don't have to worry about where knife placement is, the knife pivots along the cutting board. Um, the liquid fill for the cups, um, the, there's different types of uh, um, read out loud um, medication. Um, you know, you can use the show and tell feature actually works really well with the echo show, but if you don't have that, um, there's different ones that you can use where we'll read um, if you set it on there, it will read your pill box. Um, some pharmacies do have that available. Um, not all of them, however. Um, there's the, the, you know, like if you need to check your, um, the temperature of your, your meat, um, we do have speaking uh, thermometers. Um, and then this, there's a picture of a woman in the middle um, upper um, row and it's showing a woman putting on her lipstick or lip gloss and what she's doing is she's using a type of a CCC um, uh, 
TV device where she's able then to, it's able to magnify using the camera, you can see up above, is able to magnify so she can see to put her lipstick on. Um, and we have, um, you know, again, whether it would be me going out, one of our occupational therapists, they're the only two occupational therapists, I believe, in the state or even the surrounding area that specialize in low vision. Um, and then we do have our orientation mobility trainers um, that can also go out. And um, I've worked with one of our orientation mobility trainers, Haley, um, on getting a woman so she can sew again. Um, the woman loved sewing and her, with her vision loss, um, it was really hard for her to do that. And we were able to go out and make some marks on her sewing machine so she would know where to um, start. Um, we were able to get some different needles for her that were self-threading um, and she <clears throat> back up and sewing again. Um, we work a lot with wavered services. Um, that's my area. Um, the OTs, occupational therapists do a little bit with that, but that is where, again, we can go out um, and do the um, assessments in home, in the work area, um, or in um, like a residential setting, uh, like a group home setting. We can go out and do assessments um, for different devices, controls, or medical appliances or supplies. Um, we can then, um, in return, if we go out and do the assessment and the assessment, um, whatever we, we find was successful, again, using that set framework, or, um, we then can put everything together, um, get that to the county case manager um, or the care coordinator, whoever is working with them. And then we can order the devices, get the devices in, get them to the, to the consumer or the client, do the, the setup if needed, do the training, and then be there for supports in the future if they need any kind of troubleshooting. So um, it's kind of nice because we can be that one-stop shop where, where somebody can get what exactly what they need, what works for them. Um, there are a lot of different devices out there. Um, however, not all devices work for everybody. So um, Elma may live next door to Gertrude and see that she has this wonderful tablet and she uses it great, but Elma might not, that might not be for whatever reason, it doesn't work for her. Um, but she may have already went and bought one or borrowed one from somewhere else because she thought, well, this is what she had and it worked for her, but that's not always the case. It, it's not a one size fits all. Um, all devices are different for everybody on how they need to be accessed and and what how they need to be set up and how they need to be trained on so that's what's really important about making sure that they get the right device um, especially if you're going into a house or you're doing anything with like a shower chair or a grab bar um, anything like that if, if it's not set up right for that person um, then there could be an injury that could be involved and so you just really want to make sure that people get exactly what they should have um, whether it's an assessment of somebody going out to taking a look, um, whether that's an ATP or an occupational therapist or a physical therapist, um, that would be really the best um, to make sure that the evaluation is done correctly. Um, so um, this just waiver service continued. It just goes over um, doing, we can do go out and do home evaluations um, to tell, you know, uh, make suggestions and work with the person on what kind of home modifications do they feel they need and then provide those recommendations. Um, and then family training and counseling. So right now we're doing, um, we have a new exciting program, uh, Tech for Healthy Aging. And so it, we actually are covering the whole state with this. Um, and a, right now it's a 20 month pilot program and we have teamed up with um, um, Tech for Home or Live Life um, Solutions, our Serena Penning and her team. Um, and so we are extremely happy to be um, working with Sue and her team. Um, and really somebody um, needs to have a disability um, in order to qualify for this and be 60 plus. Um, it's funded through the De uh, Department of Human Services, and it's part of the Live Well at Home grant. Um, and so with partnering with them, again, we are able to cover the whole state. So if we have a referral that comes in from the Rochester area, um, of course, uh, 
live, live life uh, therapy solutions will take that. And if it's something up in this area or up um, making maybe in Cook County or Lake County, then that's something that we can take, but um, we can also work together. So um, it's been an amazing program. We've been really busy with it. Um, and it's been amazing to work with Sue um, and her team. And um, they've given us some amazing training and we've given them some great training on uh, the low vision and the blindness yeah. side of it. Um, that they didn't have before. Um, so it's the, the tech for healthy aging um, is just really important. It's, it's really to improve safety um, and accessibility within people's um, you know, senior age homes. Um, and the picture that is shown here is a woman sitting at a table looking at a tablet and she is um, a, a Finnish um, and she is able to read her um, finish books again and, and things that she wasn't able to do for so long. She, I, I believe she was actually, actually on one of our news um, stories and she just is so excited to be able to read again. One of our occupational therapists worked with her on getting that tablet and getting it set up for her so she can read her finished books again. Um, so the program addresses challenges. Um, we're person-centered, not one size fits all true assist assistive technology experts. And we um, have a wonderful team. We, we do, um, we're very blessed to have a, a large, great team that we have. Um, this is a little blurb on our occupational therapy. It does require a doctor's referral, um, can address any disability area or issue, not just vision loss. Um, right now they're working with the hybrid model of doing a lot of telehealth, but we're also doing in-home services if needed. Um, so a lot of what we've been doing with that hybrid model is doing our intake process um, via uh, whether it be Zoom or Teams um, or Google Meets or just over the phone. Um, and then if there's any device training or setup, then we'll go out to their home and do that. And of course, if there's any assessment needed too. Um, and we serve all of Northern Minnesota and then nearby Wisconsin. Um, we will to um, go out of the Northern Minnesota area. Uh, we do have some, some individuals that we'll see down towards the Metro area if needed. Um, so some examples, they do environmental assessments and recommendation, daily living, task training, like cooking chores, recreational, um, strengthening balance and other health issues, computer, phone, uh, tablet accessibility. Um, so if you have any questions, um, here, here is my email and also Randy's email, um, and you can certainly reach out um, how to make a referral for, for OT or general services. There's a form right on our um, website that you can make a referral. Um, we have our, a direct line for our, our intake specialist. Um, and then if it's anything for waivered services or um, really specific for assistive technology assessment or services, or even a trial, um, you can connect with me and there's my direct contact information. Um, does anyone have any, any questions at this time? I, I just really wanna stress that our assistive technology loan and demo program is a free program. I like to compare it to a library where you can borrow the device for up to 30 days or longer if needed on certain things. Um, and we'll make sure that you um, get the training and supports that you need along with that device. Um, we do have some open-ended device uh, loans as well where somebody can borrow the device until they no longer need it. Um, you know, we do have some, it, it changes all the time of what's in that program. It might be like a, um, a CCTV, like we saw that woman um, helping, you know, to put that, that lipstick on. Um, it might be an older iPad that we can put a, an app to. Um, and those open-ended programs are really for somebody that um, needs a device of that type and has no other means of getting it. So it would be a used device, but in good working condition. And again, that program, um, those devices do change very often. Um, but again, you can connect with me if you have any questions um, in regards to that, or you can make a, a general referral with um, the information shown on the screen as well. Um, and with that, I will stop sharing my screen. And um, I see we have, oh. um, anyway, if you, anyone has any questions, please reach out to either myself, Sherry, or Randy um, at the White House, and we can see what we can do to help you. And I really thank you guys for all, 
listening and um, to what we have to say. It's been a real pleasure to be on with you guys, by the way. Thank you so much, Sherry and Randy. That's such great information. And I really love you have such a multidisciplinary kind of wraparound approach where, you know, if, like you said, it's not not everything worked for everyone and the your commitment to, to finding the, the right answer to each individual's needs is really pretty great. So thank you again. Um, we've got, oh, let me pull it up here. All right, so Chloe, uh, if you wanna take over from here, that would be just great. Okay. I have a PowerPoint as well, so I will share that. Okay, can you all see that? Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, like Brenda said, thank you so much, um, Brenda, by the way. I am Chloe Trolley. I am the independent living and AT specialist here at Access North in Duluth. And actually I'm filling in um, Sherry's shoes. She used to be here in this position or kind of half of this, half this position. So um, big boots to fill <laughs> because she is awesome. But um, anyway, so thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here and just share this awesome program that we have. And I feel like the word doesn't get out as much for this um, for our AT program. So I think I'm super excited to share and hopefully we can spread the word um, and help as many people in this region that we can. So to start out, I'll just talk about Access North. We are at a, a center for independent living, um, specifically of the Northeastern Minnesota area. We have offices in Hibbing, I'm in Duluth. Um, we have offices in Brainerd, Aiken, and Walker, and we serve counties of um, Aiken, Carlton, Cass, Cook, Crow Wing, Itasca, Kuchiching, Lake Pine, and St. Louis. Um, and SILs, or Center for Independent Livings, are located throughout the U.S. Um, and we have eight total locations in Minnesota. And our mission here at Access North is to assist individuals with disabilities to live independently, pursue meaningful goals, and have the same opportunities as all people. So um, to achieve that goal, we have five core services, including independent living skills, which is kind of my focus area, advocacy, information and referral, peer and group support, and transition to community. And then beyond those five, we also have several different additional services. Um, the RAMP, pro RAMP project, uh, which as Brenda noted, there's a May um, webinar coming up and Jason, our um, home access coordinator will be presenting on that um, and the home, home accessibility um, a little more into that home modification stuff as well that we provide. We also have PCA choice, homemaking and res respite care, relocation services coordination, which kind of includes assisting people um, with applying for, for housing, um, any HRA services we can assist them with, um, and finding services once they move and things like that, finding moving resources as well. So um, we also provide support planner services for consumer direct obtaining support plans, wavered services, um, which includes some independent living coaching and home and community-based services. Um, AccessNorth.net is a great resource as well. They, um, at that website, they just have, there's so many resources um, and links to dig through. So if you're looking for kind of a quick quick answer, you might be able to find it on there. Um, if not, all of our contact information is there as well, so you can give us a call. And of course, this is assistive technology and home accessibility, which I'll be talking about today. Computer classes and computer labs. Um, right now with COVID, we um, are currently closed um, and the computer classes aren't happening, but we're hoping with Hopefully things getting back to normal, we'll be able to provide this again soon. We also have a partnership with Vocational Rehab um, and we do things like independent living assessments um, and skills training um, and driver's license um, practice with Voc Rehab. Um, 
really what anything that they refer us to we can provide. Um, and with the driver's license written test assistance, we can provide that to anyone. They don't necessarily have to be um, sent by Volk Rehab. In public education, we just, um, anyone who has questions about anything related to disability or aging or anything, they can give us a call and we can hopefully find an answer for them or um, you know, provide a resource to them to find the answer. And we are also a COVID-19 community coordinator through um, the Department of Health. Um, so we can answer anything COVID related, where to go find a vaccine, how to sign up, how to get tested, or any, you know, if they're having questions about vaccines and don't know really where to ask, they can give us a call. So we can jump into assistive technology or AT. Um, as many of you probably know, assistive technology is a device or service that improves the ability of people um, to maintain or improve their independence in performing daily living activities. Um, if someone, typically people come to me um, knowing exactly what they need or, or uh, maybe not necessarily the equipment, but what they need help with. And sometimes they're just like, I just need help. I don't know what it is. And in that case, we can, we can do a um, assistive technology assessment, which Sherry talked a little bit about using that set um, framework for the consumer environment tasks and tool, looking at all of those things and helping determine, determine the type of technology that might be beneficial to that person. And sometimes it's just having a discussion with the person. And sometimes it's kind of um, just viewing what, how they go about their day at their, at their whatever environment that they're in that they need the assistance um, and kind of making the suggestions at that point. And generally there are two types, which Sherry also kind of touched on, um, low tech and high tech. Low tech is obviously not very complex. Um, they're low in cost um, based on universal design principles and um, are usually available to the general public. So things like a shoehorn is the first thing that comes to my, come to my mind. Um, you know, you can find those at Walgreens um, and they're easy to get and keep. So then there's high tech. Um, which tends to be more specialized and focused on a person's need, um, higher in cost, and may require some extra training as well. Um, so with our um, with assistive technology, there are funding options. And again, Jerry talked a little bit about this. So we have the MA and medical waiver programs, which for MA, you have to be medically necessary. The, the device has to be medically necessary in order to fund it. The waiver programs, it just depends. Um, so looking into that is important. Um, school districts, they have there has to be an assessment done and it has to be written into the student's IEP. Um, and then vocational rehab, it has to focus on a vocational goal um, and has to be part of that student rehabilitation service as well. Private insurance varies. It needs to be authorized ahead of time. And um, you just have to check with your insurance to see if it is covered or not. And of course, out-of-pocket purchases is always something you can do. It's easier, you know, like I said, with the shoehorn, that's maybe $5. But, um, you know, if it comes to a, a speaking device, the person needs a speaking device, that's going to be more expensive. And so it's a little difficult for that. So that's why um, there are some grants available, which are awesome. We have the Liberal at Home grant, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and we have grants kind of fluctuating throughout the year. And... Um, Right now, the Liberal at Home is the one we have, but sometimes there are other options. So, you know, it varies. So just give us a call and see if we have any funding available. And um, Sherry had mentioned this too. She likes to search grants out and I do the same. So if I, I, if I can help someone find funding for this, um, I will certainly do that. And, and waivers as well can pay for it depending on the person. Um, alternatively, they can access our lending library uh, the STAR program, which is Minnesota, um, covers all of Minnesota. They can lend out, lend, loan out devices as well. And there's other nonprofits and things just like Lighthouse um, who have a lending library that can um, loan out those devices as well. So I will talk about our lending library as well. Um, so it Here's a small picture of one corner of our room, but it is very large. Um, we have a wide array of devices. 
um, to help individuals live more independently. Devices are available for trials, long-term or short-term loans. Um, we do usually 30 to 60 day loans, but you know, depending on the item, um, if it's not necessarily being um, asked for often, I can usually let them take it longer. Or if there's, if you have multiple, um, of multiple um, devices of the same device, then I can let them keep that as well for longer. Um, and open-ended loans, I'll talk about Live at Home, which provides um, items at no cost um, with an open-ended loan. So it's just theirs until they don't need it anymore. So that's really nice as well. And sometimes it comes in handy for um, if someone's waiting for insurance to cover a device and they're just waiting for the order to come in. Sometimes that can be a very long time that they're waiting and they need the device now to be more independent. So um, sometimes we can fill that gap, which is really nice. Um, so the process has started. Um, anyone with a disability can come with us, come to us um, and, and borrow and item at no cost. Um, they can get started with just some intake paperwork. Usually it's a phone call to me and I, we kind of talk about what's needed a little bit and then we talk about moving forward um, and doing that intake paperwork and becoming a consumer of Access North. Um, and then beyond that, we can kind of talk about other things that might be needed as well and talk about our other services. But then we'll talk about, we'll have a discussion about their needs um, for assistive technology um, or do an AT assessment if it's necessary and recommend some devices. Um, and then if we have it in our lending library, obviously we will loan that out to them right away. Otherwise, if, they, if we shop for something or um, you know work on funding, then we'll kind of go through that process as well. Um, our appointments right now are can be done at our offices by appointment. We are closed to the public. Usually people kind of walk in and out whenever. Um, in non-pandemic life, but with the pandemic, we are um, open 12 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Um, Monday through Friday. So um, our reception, receptionist is here um, during those times. So if there's a time we can set up to make an appointment, she can um, open the doors and then um, I can leave to take a test. Otherwise, if someone's comfortable, we can do a home visit. Um, and of course, we'll be using the proper people masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, and doing um, um, social distancing as well. So, um, but if they're not comfortable with meeting in person, that's totally fine. We totally understand. We can do a phone or Zoom meeting, depending on the individual present preference and um, technology availability. Um, so once the once we have a device ready for them, we can, there are a few ways we can do it. They can just come and pick it up at our office and if I know a time, I can just let our receptionist know that they're coming in and um, picking that up and they'll have a paper to sign. Um, otherwise, um, with COVID-19, we've been kind of doing contact lists so I can send them the forms in one way or another um, and then just drop something off on their porch or whatever is most convenient for them. And sometimes that's just how it works based on schedules <laughs> because we can't find the time to, to do the pick up or drop off. Um, and then one more thing about this is um, with COVID-19, we kind of up the ante with our cleaning process. So we start out with a, um, for things that can be sprayed down, we just spray a um, hydrogen peroxide on it and let it sit overnight to disinfect. And then again, follow up that um, with another disinfectant spray or bleach if it's available and can go on the device. Um, and then once it's, going out to another individual, we will sanitize that again. So just so people are aware, especially because some of these items can be personal, we wanna make sure that they're very, very clean before they go out to another person. So here um, are a couple pictures of our devices. So the phone, we have a um, clear sounds amplified phone. Um, we have a couple of these and you can see the numbers are very large as well. So you know it helps with hearing loss and vision loss well. Um, there is color ID as well on that. Um, there is a speaking measuring cup, uh, a very large remote control. We have a few different versions of remote controls, so there are options. Um, a voice amplifier, a nice grab and pour, um, 
super low tech device. You just kind of put that around like say a pop bottle um, and it just makes it super easy to pour with one hand. Um, a little light up magnifying glass, a handy bar, which um, is kind of nice. You can keep it in your car and it kind of latches onto one of the um, pieces on the inside of the door. And so it just, it's kind of like an extra lever to push down um, to get yourself out of the car, which is super nice. Um, a jar opener, um, automated, so you just press a button. Um, little bump dots that can kind of, um, can be put anywhere, they're just sticky. Um, so if someone, you know, say um, they're looking for the knob on the oven, they can put the, the bump dot there um, to make sure that they're putting their hand in the correct place. And then here's a little grip wrench as well. So it just makes it easier to turn things and um, specifically tools. Um, so that's super helpful. And then over here, we have a few more. So this is a hair drying stand, um, a stock, a couple of stock aids and med organizers, piece for shoehorn. Um, this is a little um, toenail or fingernail clipper that's on a little pedestal and it sticks to the table so it won't move and it's just kind of a one-handed thing, and then a zipper and button hole. So kind of some of our low-tech things. Um, we have a few other things as well. We have kitchen utensils, cutlery, um, appliances like um, automated choppers, um, heat and plug grips, so it's easier to kind of pull um, those items or hold those items. Um, utensil grips, um, pen and pencil grips, dressing, more dressing aids, um, hygiene tools, um, a bunch of low vision items, large telephones, large timer, uh, the list goes on and on. We have, um, I believe it's almost 500 items in our lending library. Of course, that includes like these little bump dots. So, um, it's, but it's still a very full room. So, um, you give me a call and we will kind of discuss what the need is and see if we have it. I can dig through and see what we have. Um, and then we have plenty of um, wheelchairs and walkers as well. We have this rollator kind, um, as well as kind of the taller um, foldable metal versions without the wheels, um, and lots of canes, um, a couple of scooters for if someone gets like a broken leg or something. Um, and then a shower bench and a shower chair. We have lots of shower benches, um, and, you know, just a bunch of different stuff like cushions and. Um, you know, for, um, for kids and students, we have lots of toys and um, which automated toys. Um, so it's, it's kind of a very, like I said, a wide array. So with that, I will talk about the Live at Home grant program. Um, so you might already know that the Live at Home um, grant, the goal is to just assess um, people's isolation and their safety and and allow them to um, live independently at home and in their community of choice for as long as they can. Um, and through this, we are able to provide different home access modifications like ramps and um, low rise stairs and tub cuts, um, grab bars and things like that in the home, um, which Jason will touch on in the, um, the May webinar. Um, and then we can also provide assistive technology devices to improve and support those adults um, to remain safely in their home and community. So um, when we work with someone through the Live Well, Live well at Home grant, um, we like to customize each project. So it's really based on that person's need. So sometimes they might come to us for a ramp. And then as we're doing that intake, we'll talk about other things that might be able to help them. Like if they're struggling with, you know, getting around in their home or um, um, not feeling safe in their home, then we can kind of address that through assistive technology and see what else we can provide for them. Um, similar to the lending library process, it starts with the paperwork and that discussion, that short discussion, and then turns in, we, we have like a meeting with them and really dig into what they're, what they're needing. Um, and the Live well at Home application does include a rapid screen survey, which assesses um, their level of risk um, as, you know, to be relocated. Um, and we do that before, so at the time that the application is filled out, and then after, um, you know, maybe a few months after the, the um, 
modification or assistive technology is provided to them so that we can um, kind of judge um, if it's working, if it benefited them, um, if they need any other things, things like that. Um, and then, um, like Sherry said, they like to provide the support we do as well. We don't want to leave people high and dry, um, especially if this is a brand new technology for the person. Um, we want to make sure that we're setting it up correctly um, and training them correctly and then just being a support for them if, if in the future if something comes up um, and they need our help. Sometimes um, the person will just say, oh, my son, he'll be able to do it or my daughter will. And so they, they do it. And if they're more comfortable with that, that's totally fine with us. We can still be that point of contact for support if you need it. So here's a few examples of some of the um, assistive technology that we like to focus on for um, the live well at home. Um, the goal is to address social isolation, environmental control, and um, enhance safety by providing these solutions. And they're generally simple solutions, right? So once they're installed, um, they're, they're pretty easy to use. Um, so the training is, is not too intricate. Um, and sometimes it comes up again later where they can't figure out how to do something. And that happens to me as well. So we like to provide that training. Um, so when we're looking at this, we wanna focus on that social isolation, environmental controls and safety. Um, we, we often have um, devices that kind of separately address these items and then they work together to do even more or just make it that much easier for a person. So an iPad and tablet can help with social, social, social isolation by FaceTiming their family and friends, um, but it can also act as something, a form of enjoyment, you know, when they're stuck at home, especially now with COVID, you know, they can crosswords or watch the news or YouTube or read a book or anything like that. And um, I especially love the iPad just because it's uh, the, the accessibility options are so great with um, um, the speaking and um, reading aloud and things like that. So it's, it's a super helpful device, um, especially if someone has vision loss. And we can connect that to, you know, one of the Echo shows and that's how you can control those things or the ring doorbell and it can ring right to the iPad if you want it to. Um, there's just great collaboration between these devices um, that can that can really help a person out. Um, and paired also with if you have an Echo Show you can pull up the ring doorbell on that or the light bulbs and the, um, the outlets you can control those through the Alexa and um, it just makes life super easy and you know something that might um, be kind of a struggle for a person might be way easier once these items are installed. Um, and it's super fun to watch someone's tech abilities like increase so much in just such a few short hours. So some examples, um, we have Jackie who called needing assistance with answering her front door. So she uses a, a power chair and often is sitting in her recliner um, and when someone knocks knocks on the door and she she told me she she just yells to have them come in the door so she doesn't have to get out get out of her chair and then get into her power chair and then drive over to the door and let them in so um, she wanted something a little easier and um, quicker and less less yelling so we provided her um, with a Google Home Hub and this was actually through our planning grant which we were able to um, get some great um, technology devices for individuals um, in the Hibbing area with that grant. It was super fun as well. Um, and then with the Live Well at Home, we were able to do another Google Home Hub and then an Arlo video doorbell as well so that she um, is able to monitor her front door. She can feel secure. She can turn on lights using the Google Home Hub. Um, she had trouble um, getting to the little light once it was dark outside in her bedroom. And it was a really dark hallway and she wasn't so she can use Google to turn that on before she enters the room and feel a little safer when she's walking down in case um, she runs anything over. So um, she can access the news as well. She loves watching the CNN stuff. So that is perfect for her um, and checking on the weather. And um, she actually told me this last week that she had called a friend who moved to Florida um, using Google Duo. So that was super exciting as well. So it just, it you know, she came for one thing. 
she discussed other options and then you know she was able to do so many things to help her out and audrey she called um for a phone due to frustration was struggling to hear and have successful conversations um and she was even kind of missing out on she was she was involved in the church and she was missing out on those calls and not being able to hear exactly what was needed so she was feeling super frustrated so we were able to sit down and just pick out a specific phone for her and get that ordered um and something that exactly what she wanted she got an answering phone and two handsets so she if she's in one room she can still get the phone and be able to hear that person um and then as we were talking she we talked about a handheld magnifier so we were able to get that as well for her because she also has um And Barb, who, um, Sherry, I think, set her up with her first round of um, Amazon Echo Shows. So she had already been using these items and really benefited from them, from them um, and came to us for a railing. And then as we were talking, she told me that her, her Echo was not working well. And so uh, we ordered one of those as well, um, a new one, so that she could use those environmental controls again. And she was able to get her railing fixed as well. So she's she is feeling more secure in um, fixing her home as well. And Sue, so she came for grab bars and adjustable shower heads. Um, we were able to get those bathroom fixes. And then as we were talking, um, she talked about the ring doorbell and kind of a similar story. Um, as Sherry told, she wasn't able to get to the door quick enough. So um, I thought a ring doorbell would be perfect with, with one of those echo shows so that she could um, chat with person um, via the echo um, and, and just see who's there if she even needs to bother opening the door <laughs> um, so and also some bulbs and plugs um, she had some mo mobility issues and so being able to see and turn on lights upstairs before she goes up there is um, a perfect solution for her um, so she feels more secure and um, like her home is easier to access so if there are any questions, um, or if you know of any person who can benefit from assistive technology um, or the Live Well at Home grant or any services that we provide, feel free to reach me um, either by email or phone. Um, this isn't a direct line, so you do need to ask for Chloe, but um, you can give that a call anytime and I can um, help you or find someone who can help you. Great, thank you so much, Chloe. We did have one question from an attendee just asking about you know, the typical budget for a client and is there a maximum and um, are there opportunities for, you know, potentially uh, fulfilling a client's needs by maybe accessing multiple sources of funding? Definitely. So um, typically, I believe, um, and Jason will probably talk more about the ramp specifically, but um, typically for the AT, I believe it's like um, a thousand and we never generally go well over that. But if it does, then we would we can discuss at that point, um, you know, different funding options. So either pay, setting up a payment plan through us or yeah, finding a waiver um, waiver payments or something, another option for them to provide that. Right. Anyone else have any questions for our presenters or any comments? Well, I just want to say thank you so much to, to Chloe and to Randy and Sherry for joining us today and sharing all of the information with us about the programs from each of their organizations. And um, just a quick reminder um, that again, visit our Facebook page for more information about those upcoming sessions, um, like the one that Chloe mentioned on home modifications. And then also we have one on housing options for older adults, um, the continuum of options for folks. Um, I want to thank everyone, all of our attendees for joining us today. Um, we, again, we will have been recording the session, so we will be sending you out an email with a link to that recording, um, as well as a survey on um, to where you can give us feedback on the session and let us know what other areas you might want to learn more about. Um, oh, everyone has a Looks like the snow is melting a little bit here. So I think we're moving closer to spring again. Um, uh, Want to thank everyone for joining us today and, and hope that everyone has a, a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you so much.